maximizing the ministry of men. Because we've been taking this series up, I've been, I think I've been repeating a few things over time, and I believe it's for the sake of emphasis. Maximizing the ministry of men, it is important to understand that if God is to help you, God will help you through men. And just like I said in the, first, in the previous session, that was last week, if God is restoring a relationship between you and him, you will also have to restore a relationship between you and your neighbor. Exodus chapter 2 from verse 1 to 8. Write it down. Maybe when you get home, you read. It's just a story. Let me paraphrase that story. During the time when the children of God were in Egypt, they were slaves in Egypt. A woman gave birth to a son and put the son in a basket. Put that child there and put him in the bank of the river Nile. So the daughter of Pharaoh came to take her bait in the river and then saw that wonderful baby and decided to keep it, to keep the baby. And then the young child who was watching the baby from afar asked, do you need a Hebrew woman to take care of this? He said, yes. Then they called the mother of, of, um, of Moses. The child we're talking about is Moses. Now, two things. Moses got saved, the mother got employed. Strategic positioning. Now, listen carefully. Like I said in the first service, everybody, some people who help you in this life, they don't necessarily need to be of the same religious belief, the same faith with you. You must learn how to have contact without what? Contamination. The people who can help you, they don't have the same belief as you do. So don't just say that you only do business with Christians. Then you have some of the things you are using. That phone you are using, believe me, the person who made that phone does not believe there is a God. That phone you are using, that phone that is almost your life and death. The person who made that phone believes he is God. Uh Uh-huh. The person printing that money in your bank account that you are bringing to church might every Friday go and bow his head down. So, let me tell you, if you think helpers can come in different shapes, in different colors, in different backgrounds. So don't limit the help of God through men just by your religious sin. So imagine Moses was saved by the same persons oppressing his people. If it were you, you say, God, kill me, kill the child, instead of me taking help from an unbeliever. We said that this is not applicable anyways to the institute of marriage. That once it comes to marriage, you are better off getting married to someone who believes in your God. One of the undoing of King Saul was that he brought and he got into covenant with people who did not believe in his God. After the reign of Solomon, there were how many gods in Israel? They had to pack them. Clearance. This one will come with the God. This one will come with the God. This one will come with the God. And this is what happens in marriage. Sometimes you can marry an unbeliever and you don't know that you have welcomed either Satan's second son or Satan's third daughter into your home. And the next thing you are asking, where is all these things coming from? Do you know that Satan can allow you to have money while he takes the important things in your life? Hello? Now this is one, you know, Satan is very crafty. Can how you have money? Because he knows that having money is not, it's not necessarily the problem. That's why you must understand that even making money is not God's problem. It's not Satan's problem either. God is more interested in your soul. Satan is more interested in your soul. You making money is not necessarily Satan's problem. So he can allow you to have money. He can allow you to have that rich husband or wonderful wife. But just make sure Satan is not taking something greater than what is allowing you to have. What shall he profit a man to gain the whole world? But what? 
lose his own soul. So, we were talking about people you should meet. We talked about disciples in the first service. We talked about divine connectors. We talked about also, to some extent, a spouse, an uncommon spouse, an uncommon partner. Now, let's briefly talk about these people we call the uncommon enemy. They are needed in life, if you don't know. There are people that will be in your life because until they expose you to hardship, the best in you will not come out. I've always said this. I watch football. If Messi were not in Ronaldo's generation, Ronaldo would not have been a great footballer. Same thing with Messi. If Ronaldo was not in his generation, if he has it too easy, you know what will happen? He will end up like people like Ronaldinho or like Ronaldo. When there is no opposition, mediocrity becomes the next level. When there is opposition, you strengthen your loins. Every great man has faced a great opposition. The making of prophet Moses was tied behind the hardness of the heart of Pharaoh. can find anybody that anybody who has done something great in life, there has been this uncommon enemy who has been there. Don't pray for that enemy to die. That's why Jesus said that you should pray for your enemies. Because it is in their presence that you will be anointed. He anointed me in the presence of my enemy. Why should they die? They should be around so that I can be anointed in their presence. So stop praying this fall and I pray everywhere. How will they now be? They need to see the glory. They need to see. They need to see. Someone said they need to see. Let them write me off. No problem. They don't need to die. They don't need to go to the early grave. My brother, stay alive. I need you alive. Because that thing you said, you will, you will, change, your, you will change that thing. Say, this one cannot succeed. I don't need you to die. Because you will come around and say, oh, behold the Savior. Yes. So, change your prayer point from today. If there is this uncommon enemy blessed by, this, by Satan, listen, as, as God anoints somebody to succeed, Satan has anointed somebody to thwart that plan. That's what you must understand. If you are John the Baptist, there must be Herod. When there's Elijah, you will see Eha. You will see Jezebel. There is always somebody there to fight God's elect. There's always somebody there to fight God's elect. Now, if you are not facing opposition, a great adversary, maybe your destiny is not that great, huh? So stop complaining when you have enemies around you. Stop complaining every day. Uh, enemies everywhere. Stop complaining. They are there because what is in you is great. Do you throw stones at a tree that has no fruit? So when you see people throwing stones at you, you find out that you have fruits in you. So let me tell you, you need them. For the making of David, there was a Goliath. Is that not true? Is that not true? You must face opposition in life. You must face opposition. People like this, now listen carefully, there is a difference between respecting your enemy and being afraid of your enemy. There are people in your life that they will always oppose you. You owe them respect, but you should never fear them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in them. Regardless of what they think, let me tell you. You can respect the person you are competing with, but at the same time, you don't fear him. Let me tell you, as I am now, I fear no man. I respect, I respect men. And I fear God. Even if Satan comes here in human flesh, I will still not fear him. majority of those things that we call fears are afraid of us when we understand. Let me tell you, 
if there was no Haman, what will now happen to the glory of Mordecai? What will happen to the glorification of Queen Esther? Now I want to tell you, specifically look into your life, there is this person in your life. He's always opposing you. He's always trying to frustrate what you are doing. Don't just pray and say, Lord, take this person away. Find out the secret to undoing him. You don't need to know. Lord, kill him. What are you killing him for? What are you killing him for? Nature will take his course. Nature, nature will take his course. Basically, there are some enemies that... You know the way I am right now. Let me, let me tell you this. This works for me. There are certain times people have worked or planned certain things to work against me. They did not know that they were working for me. Did you not hear what the Bible said? That if Satan had known, he would not have crucified the Son of Man. He did not know. He thought it, he was working against Christ. Not knowing that he was working for Christ. I speak to you, your enemies will work for you. They will think they want to demote you. They will think they want to bring you down. They will not know that they have been blinded by their own hatred to work for your promotion. Yeah. What is going about? Ah. No, no. A lot of people, some people have carried my name. They did not know that why they were carrying my name, speaking my name from place to place. That they were telling people, go and check out this man. And when these people came and they saw this man, they said, ah, the hand of the Lord is upon this man. Let me stay in this temple. How many people have they say, they come and say, this man is this. They did not know. But why they were spreading it? The angel of the Lord was using them to say, go and meet this man. He will carry you to where you are going to. If they had known, they would have kept quiet. So, that's why I'm not afraid of the enemies taking my name anywhere. Take my name there. The most important thing is that it will not come back to me in a bad way. There is oil. There is, there is oil on that name. That name is recognizable in the realm of the spirit. So, carry it. Go with it. Sometimes people are fighting you. And when they are fighting you, you are smiling. They are asking, what is wrong with this man? We, on, we know better than what they know. And they were crucifying Christ. They thought, oh, they are done with him. Kill him and let him go. When they were plotting, they thought, kill him. Their eyes opened after three days. No, 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 not after three days. When Jesus gave up the ghost, their eyes opened. If they had no, they had buried the seed, but for it to germinate was worse them. And immediately they remembered the scripture. In fact, may I prophesy to you, those persons that will bring adversity to push you to your next level, eh? let them start now. Because your next level is close by. Yeah. Okay, be, let's be fast now. Let's finish this thing. Be fast. If you're not in my life now, who will now oppose me? Who will now be a warrior? David was doing all he was doing in the in the field until he did the open one with Goliath. It was that fight that convinced the armies of Israel that this person can lead them. He was already anointed though. But it was that fight that convinced them because their leader could not fight it. You see, Goliath was not Saul's anointed enemy. Goliath was David's anointed enemy. That is why you don't fight every battle. Only fight ones, certain battles that are critical to you. Oh... Hello? The battles that when you go into, it's a waste of time. 
There are battles that, that's why you say, you must choose the battle. Choose your opponent. Those people, let them remain in your life. How many of you know Godiola? How many of you know Mourinho? Ha! These two people, when they were in Spain, always hitting each other. But that was the time Spanish football was the sweetest. You dare not miss El Clasico. When you are watching El Clasico, your leg will be shaking. Because that was when El Clasico was El Clasico. The moment Murillo left, what is El Clasico? They started playing nonsense. Oh, no, who will enjoy it? Godot had just left too. Now, we can be playing El Clasico and uh, somebody's frying egg. You can't eat egg and this, this is El Clasico. Is that not true? And that was when they brought the biggest amount of money. So you need certain people to bring out the best in your life. And you need them. Another group of persons you will need are certain people who are gifted. Someone say gifted. Men who are skilled in what they are doing. Who are skillful in what they are doing. You will not know everything. You will have to meet certain people who are resourceful in what they are doing. They are talented people, chosen professionals. And they will use their gifts and skills and talent to serve and service your vision. When you go back, you read 1 Samuel chapter 16 from verse 17 to 18. As you are in life, you will never be a master in all trades. But we need certain people. You see, let me tell you. Can't look at a great man. There is this person in his life that can do one or two things at the same time. God brings those people to you to help you in they are, what do they call them? To me, I call them utility players. Utility players. In the morning, you call this person is a preacher. In the next morning, he's an, engin- an engineer. The next moment is this. The next moment is this. The next moment is this. You will need them in life. If not, you will keep wasting resources every day. That's why I will go back to that point of discipleship. Raise people for yourself so that your workload can reduce. Now, very briefly, I want to tell you how to manage these relationships. Because if you don't manage it well, you're going to have a problem. I'm going to be rushing. I, would, I don't have much time. I want to end this series today. If you want to maximize the ministry of men in your life, one of the first things you must do is that you must go out of your way to help others. The helps you give to others a lot of times are seeds repayable in posterity. The help you render to men a lot of times are seeds that come up tomorrow. Where is, is there anybody remaining? In the house of Jonathan, that I may help him. Sometimes you will not be the one to repeat, it becomes your sons. Some of the things you have to eat today are the sufferings of your father yesterday. Some of the men who your father helped yesterday, their sons are likely to help you today. Go about sowing good seeds of help to people. If you don't repeat tomorrow, your sons will repeat. Are you listening to me? One of the things we suffer in Nigeria is that the only thing we want to leave for our children is national debt. This country, they have borrowed and borrowed. China does not want to borrow money again to us. They don't want to lend money again to us. One minister was crying that they don't want. I said, thank God, this is the best news I've seen this year. We don't need loan again. Because the children are going to be the ones to, small time, five years they die, three years they die. Who paid their sons? They don't care. If you want to activate the ministry of men in your life, help them. 
At certain times, I've been on certain places, gone to places, people will just call me, Pastor Sam, this, 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 this. I don't know you. How did I meet you? Where did I meet you? I don't know. You just this little thing, this one, this one, they just help you. I say, wow, wonderful. Your messages, your this helped me, your this helped them. I did not know. And let me tell you this, let me strike this balance. Don't help people because you are expecting something in return. Help people because that's the best thing to do. Be a good person naturally. Don't be doing things because you want something in return. You're a businessman. Did you hear what I just said? If you are doing something or you are doing good because you want something in return, you're a businessman. Do things because that's the right thing. Help people because that's the right thing to do. Don't help people because some way, somehow, you're going to get it back. Galatians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8 was talking about seeds. If you plant selfishness, you're going to get selfishness. If you plant slothfully, you're going to, if you sow slothfully, you're going to receive slothfulness. What is, you know, everything is about yourself, everything is about yourself, me, myself, and I. The three people that matter in your life, me, myself, and I. No wonder. You know, it's not, it's not eat alone and die alone. It's Nigeria that said die alone because they're very wicked people. It's eat alone and dine. Like dine. Like dining table. Uh, it's not die alone. Because I know you've been wishing people to die. Uh -huh. Some of you even said it this morning. Someone wanted to help you. If someone did not want to help you. said eat alone and die alone. But that's the truth. The more you go up in life, as he's saying, the more you grow in life, the more you get wealthier, build a bigger table and eat with more people. That's the beauty of life. Because whether you like it or not, you will not go home with anything. The only thing you go home with is, you will not even go home with that. The only thing we will keep in your grave is that cloth that we will buy and give you. That's all. That cloth don't worry, that might will come and eat it. Your bank account, somebody else will, go, will be eating it and smiling. Uh -huh. So that you know. In case you did not tell your son about it, the bank will take it. Or government. Those are some people that, instead of them telling their spouse about the money in their account, they will just hide it. Hide it, hide it, hide it. Nobody will know about it. Hey. And then the bank will take it. The wife will not know. The husband will not know. I heard this story. A, a boy died because of a medical bill of how many thousand? Is it 100,000? Hey! Then, I think it was uh, one of these Ponzi schemes that happened. And the woman started complaining that they took how many million from her. Your own son died. And you put how many million? Some people are so stingy and stingy to themselves. And it's, it's, it's affecting them a lot. You see when people are complaining, ah, my money, oh, they don't take my money. These same people that are saying that they don't take my money, ask them for money, they say they don't have shit. Sh sh I don't have. Truth to God, if, if, if from now, if you, if, I, if you flip me up, Shake me now. One coin, you know, go see. Then, where they, if their investment crashes, they'll tell you, hey, my five million, no. They start having limony overnight. Say, bros, what is the problem? I thought you were broke. They will not talk to us. You see them, they will be moody for like seven days. Because they can't tell us. Because why we wanted to buy food the other day? They said they did not have money. Now they don't have the mouth <laughs> to tell us now. Because if they told us to say, wait, wait, the same you soaked Gary with us. We were soaking Gary and you had this million. You see, it is that kind of attitude that leads you into Ponzi schemes. Actually, the greatest things that move people into Ponzi schemes are, is greed. If you remove greed, Ponzi schemes will not catch you too much. All my life, I've never been duped.
by anything called Ponzi scheme. Because I do not want to reap from where I did not sow. Bring 5,000. In two weeks, you will receive 15,000. You will receive 40,000. How? <laughs> okay. You want to use my 5,000 and pay the next person so that then when it's my time to cash out, you say it's unavailable. Hmm. <laughs> you are who? I don't have my money. It's better I eat fried rice with my 5,000 naira. Then you take my 5,000 naira, I don't see it. I wake up in the middle of the light and start shouting. Though. <laughs> so be good. Help people. When you help men, nature will help you. When you help people, it's like a credit to humanity. Humanity will definitely credit you back through people. Are you listening to me? If you want to activate the ministry of men, you must learn how to appreciate people. Please pardon me, I'm going to take 10 minutes out of your time this morning to finish this. You must please learn how to appreciate people. Appreciate men in your life. Because when you don't appreciate them, they might leave your life too early, too soon. I hope you don't get to appreciate people when you have lost them. I hope you don't get wise to the ministry of men when it's too late. I want to speak to young men in this house. You see, your parents are part of your greatest asset on earth. Keep them now because those who do not have are crying. You see, your parents, keep them now because those who do not have are crying. You might think you will not miss them. The day they die, the scroll will fall away from your eyes. That day will be when the scroll will fall away from you. You don't want to do that. You married a beautiful husband. You married a handsome wife. <laughs> Appreciate them. <laughs> Appreciate them. You know, sometimes some things happen in this life. You see somebody who oh, that's why some of these people who don't appreciate their spouse they leave frying pan to get inside fire and when they get inside fire they are calling pastor come I'm not coming anywhere what am I coming to you were in AC you left AC you went to Kaduna Sun appreciate what you have <laughs> Appreciate what you have. Appreciate the men in your life. You see, the way you are right now, you might think that your destiny helpers might be somewhere. They might have just been in your life all this while. Waiting for you to appreciate them so that they can do more. There is this motivation that comes when we appreciate it. You can do more. You can score more. That's why the greatest of coaches must be motivators. They must appreciate. Never despise anybody. Place value on anyone that comes your way. Remember Neyman. 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 If he did not appreciate that little child, who would have healed him? Number three, don't be a betrayer. Somebody say, don't be a betrayer. Be a loyalist. Hey. If you betray men, men will come around your life to betray you. Don't betray people. And those that will be loyal to you will be very far from you. Regardless of anything, people must betray you. Regardless of anything, Jesus was betrayed by somebody. Jesus being the, the man of perfect principle and perfect nature. So it's not about 
maybe instant, little instances of betrayers. But if you are a consistent betrayer, men will betray you. You are too quick to side somebody and too quick to leave that person. Don't come out into people's life and say, I'm this for you. Too quickly. Be sure and stand by it. Learn to be loyal to people. Someone say, learn to be loyal to people. Learn to be loyal to people. You must learn to be loyal to people. Don't betray the trust people gave to you. You know, there's this saying. When you are angry with people, when you have a fallout, when you have a breakup, what they told you in secret still remains a secret. Are you listening to me? It's not a joke. Some people release secrets just to get back at people for having disagreements or misunderstandings with them. Those people are the worst set of people to come across because that their new friend will get the same treatment sooner rather than later. You see, whosoever betrays his ally to stay with you will most likely betray you to stay with somebody else. That's why you must be careful staying around betrayers. And as they have told you what the other person said about you, did they tell you what they told the other person about you? They did not. They would not. I've never seen a one-way or one-sided gossip because I believe that gossips are most comfortable when the conversation is flowing. Hello? Am I making anybody angry here? No. You must leave betraying people alone. Don't betray them. Keep their trust in business and whatsoever. If this is your quality, keep that quality. Don't betray people's trust. You give them this phone, let them believe that this phone you are giving to them is original when they get to home, when they get to their workplace. Because if you betray them once, that's it. I'm buying something from you, I believe it's original. One day you put fake there. You have spoiled a business for life. It's better to tell people the truth than to allow them to find out the truth themselves. Truth might look so difficult, but it's always the best option. Someone say truth is always the best option. Another thing is that you should be humble. Your backyard is not the shortcut to heaven. Be humble. I'm just rounding up. I'm not going into details. When you go home, you should be humble if you need to attract men if you need to activate the ministry of men in your life you need to be humble nobody helps somebody who he thinks is greater than him don't be sure enough to the extent that the people who are meant to help you will think they need help from you are you listening to me you need 2 million naira you are dressing like someone who has 10 million naira how will I help you how will God help you? That's what happens even when sometimes you are claiming spirituality. The people who are meant to lay hands on you will not be saying one day I want to go and meet this man to lay hands on me. Is that not true? I'm ah, living as if in fact some people man of God don't put yourself into trouble this morning. If you want to attract men in your life, be humble. Everybody needs people who will serve them. And obviously, people who always want to help people they can trust will continue serving them. If I want to recommend you to the president, I can only recommend you to the president when I know that even if you get the power to be a president, you will still come to me and say, hey, yes, sir. If I see you as somebody, when you get there, you will attack me. I will dribble you till you are tired of calling me. Is that not true? Be humble. And let it not be a forced humility. Let it, some, let it be something that flows naturally. 
Can't see men who has been helped over time. They are humble people. Did you not hear that the Lord resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble? What is giveth grace? Promotes the humble. Little position. You think you have made it in life. You now cross your leg to talk to your boss. My God. What a dangerous expressway. who are meant to help you are in your life right now. Don't use what you call packaging to chase them away. People who are helping, you meet somebody. You know, sometimes ditch this your English and speak to people who will help you. Every day, so pray, so pray, so pray, so pray, so pray, so pray, so pray. Calm down. Some of these men who have made it in life, they did not go to school long. Everybody is using Facebook. This person who is using Facebook, who has Facebook, is only is wearing one ash polo and uh, you that you have created a little profile. You went to the studio to snap <laughs> every two weeks. You are changing. You are even paying the studio people. And the person who has that profile is is in one place or maybe in one of those meetings with one T-shirt. You. Know, this is the what 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 uh, uh, Facebook. <laughs> Someone will just come out all of a sudden in the, in the body of Christ. This is the easiest one now. The moment you get a revelation from God, you go and put apostle. Hey, everybody's an apostle now. The moment they get one insight in God's word, apostle. The next two is they call their Baba. There is this shape you need to give me in my head. Because as an apostle, my head needs to be up. <laughs> and they, they, they put it that way. And then they start twisting their tongue. And then they go and find one heavy Bible. And say, this is what we use to dissect mysteries. Bible they don't open You are dressing more than the anointing in you. <laughs> Hello? Have you seen that? Someone is dressing more than the anointing is carrying. Dressing more than the depth is carrying. And they think they've made it by having white hanky. White, white uh, towel. They think they've made it in life. And a bottle of water. They have made it. The moment they have white towel, you know this long one, they just put it here. And a bottle of water. They've made it in life. Apostle. Hmm. And uh, they got to they got look for OK shoe. And they're moving. Then the people who are meant to help you grow are seeing you calling you Papa. And the way you see that, you say, Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Oh. Uh, Bless you. Every day. Every day you carry ginger from out. Put ginger in the mouth. Uh, I just came out from 40 days prayer and uh, the Lord has been showing me great things. You are running on empty tank. Bless you. Hey, uh, small thing, tongues everywhere. People who are meant to help you are running away from you. They can't help you again. Humble yourself. My brother, even a t-shirt, wear a t-shirt. When it's time to show what is inside, when you come out, everybody will come down. Every day, uh, just want to. You, 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 you. Who you want to impress? Huh? Ask your neighbor who you want to impress. Uh, uh, come down. So that people who will help you, will help you. Imagine the angel of the Lord is coming now. Say, I need to help one man of God here. And he's moving around just by the dressing. Hmm. God, will, God will even pass that the geo. God will pass that the geo. Some angels will think that 
Some ushers are daddy Gio. I'm, ah, man of God. Hey. I pray that the Lord will give us the garment of humility. Amen. When men see you as humble people, you know, humility brings a special kind of favor. Actually, yes, yes. Humility brings a special kind of favor. When you serve, you cannot serve without humility. When you serve, you are eligible to that position, if you don't know. Because anything you serve, in one way or the other, will drop. You drop. You cannot receive an anointing you have not served. You can receive an anointing you have not serviced. It takes humility to service graces and anointings. Levels. It's just like in this nation now. Who told you that Professor Yemio Sibachot does not know certain things more than the president? Watch what will happen in 2023. No, he's saying it's our time, it's our time. Don't worry, 2023 is coming. Humility. Do you know how many people have served? Don't worry. It's not about saying gra 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 gra. Service. Before he became who he is at this stage, he was not a governor. Now, why, where did they pick him from to tell him to be a running mate of a president? He was just a commissioner. Faithful in his service. How many people will bring their money to be running mates? It was humility that brought him out. You see, everybody is declaring. He's not declaring, right? Don't worry. We are watching. You see this country? We're there here. It's not about, it's my turn. It's your turn when you have served. People are saying, it's my turn, it's my turn. When you have not served. You're wasting your time. Before this country was handed over to the Northerners, what happened? The Northerners were behaving like Mumu, according to Igbo people. They were behaving like Mumu, serving the whites, the British. When they were leaving, they were looking for who will handle this thing for them properly. They gave it to people who when they say, bring this, they will do what? They bring it. That was how this nation was sold. I will bring a liberal man in two weeks. He will speak all the grammar and say, let's destroy all these things. I will do this, I will do that. Oretos. Sir, someone says, Sir, even if that your boss does not want to release grace, God will release grace. That's what people don't know. Even if you are serving the most wicked person on earth, as you have served the spirit, as you have served the scepter, what you serve is the scepter of authority, it is invisible. That's why when it leaves one man to another, you know this thing we call staff of office is a physical representation of the scepter of authority men carry. That's what is said. just quickly, just learn to say thank you. Exhibit the spirit of understanding, understanding, understanding. Try to understand people better. Try to understand. People can be doing certain things. Just try to be the most understanding person on earth. Say thank you. See that person you say thank you, that person you appreciate it. Don't worry. Tomorrow something might just happen. Some people have helped people but just because of ingratitude they did not receive another. Someone helped you you think that the moment you say thank you, you have belittled yourself. The moment, even if you are paid, you pay people to do something, say thank you. Are you listening to me? Just, all these things is just be a good human being. That's what we are just saying. It's not as if if you say thank you, we will give you president of Nigeria. No, you are just being a good human being. No? Because there are people who are just wicked, who are just Christians. Evil people who are just Christians. 
see, when you come to this church, I know you don't expect me to say some of the things I'm saying, but just hear it and do it. It's for your own good. I think if we watch the message we give out every Sunday, the society would have been better than what it is now. Be friendly. Someone say be friendly. The cross was not at your backyard. Be friendly. Not be you, kid. Someone say, not be me, kid Jesus. Be friendly. That you a leader does not mean you need to be mean. There's a difference between being serious and being mean. Applicative face. Idiabo. Every day you are frowning. No Nepalite, no signal. Every, you are a ruffian. Be friendly. Some people are even rough, even rough to their wives. Be friendly, but my brother be coming down. Human beings are not rock. You are dealing with human beings. They are meant to be dealt with tenderness. See all those people who are doing gra Everybody has their moon button somewhere. I'm not telling you to go and find someone's moon button. I did not hear that's right, sir. Now. Someone say amen. amen. Is someone angry with me this morning? No, be friendly. Tell your neighbor, be friendly, please. Be friendly. Hey, this nation, everybody is angry with each other. Everybody is angry. Everybody is angry. Everybody is angry. I know the nation is not funny. The nation is not funny. This country is not funny. Certain things happening can just make you laugh. You know, this country is almost in cruise control. But just be friendly. Don't scare people away from your life. There are certain people who want to come to your life. Just the way you behave is behaving somehow. People who are meant to help you, but just the way you are behaving. Eh? Just the way you are behaving. They can't come close to you. Some Fathers are not fathers at home. They are bulldogs. On a more serious note, any small thing, here, why will your child not be behaving like a You don't know his name. This. No, there's a name that if you call me now, I will turn around to know who called me that name. I will turn around because ah, no, people don't call me that name. <laughs> Most holy. Be friendly with people. Be nice to people. Be kind with people. Sometimes, you know, that act of kindness might just stay with people for the rest of their lives. And when they remember your name, they say, okay, this guy. It might just be paying transport fare for somebody. I'm not saying you should start. You know, that people's scope is paying transport fare. After paying transport fare, they now want number. That's not what I'm talking about. Just be nice and friendly. You see, Okay, I will round up with this. There's somebody I was talking with. I think it was the engineer. I was talking with him. I said, so it was yesterday. So I was in his vehicle. So I told him to wind down. He wind down. So I, I was joking with one of our members here, a, a lady. So he wind down. Said, hey. And then she said, bye. So I told pastor, I told him, you see, we must understand this fundamental thing. That you can be you can have discipline as a father and yet have friendship with your children. It's not a bad thing. They know when you're serious and they know when to play with you. If they don't play with you, there are certain things they will not tell you that are critical to their development. Some children are abused and will never say because if they tell their father, their father will even beat them more. I said they are the ones that cost it. 
Please stand to your feet, please.